Well, that, that uh, uh, 800 series ambulance is uh, manned by uh, two EMT firefighters and uh, no paramedics on there. So they are unable to administer drugs and some of the uh, ALS type of uh, treatments. Unique to this station was its hazmat unit. We have one in uh, San Pedro, the 48s, and then uh, now new uh, 87s in the valley, just opened up, formerly 70s. And then one at 95s, which isn't quite full time yet, fully staffed with the apparatus is there, the members are trained, and they're, they're ready to go, but just haven't got full time yet. And then us. And 48s also has the old backup surge squad, like us and 70s. So they have equipment on there, and in a case of a large scale emergency, something you know big happens in, in the region, not just in the city of LA, but the region area of Southern California, they could actually put that in service with trained members and go out outside the city. And I noticed that you guys work a lot in concert with the LA County. Yes, we do. Fire Department, Hazardous we, Materials Squad. We've got a very good rapport with the LA County Fire Department now. Uh, Prior to the last five years, I think we didn't, but I've been involved in the hazmat probably about eight, maybe almost 10 years now, and, and we've got a real good rapport. We drill with them. Uh, we are trained up to the same level, basically, specialist level, technician level, and we have very same equipment many times, and I think they are getting the apparatus similar to ours, so we talk the same language. You know, we, we are trained pretty much the same way. We handle things very, very uh, similar pattern. So yeah, we have a real good working relationship with them. A lot of the task force houses we have visited are the classic fire station. They have the brass bowls oh, that yeah. come from the dormitories on down. But strangely enough, and I, I don't think 94 is at it, but these are brass poles. Yes, they are. These are true brass. <laughs> they are, and they're, uh, they're really nice. They're kind of nostalgic. I remember working here in the uh, early 80s, and uh, this place was called the Sparkle Corps of the battalion. I don't know if you've heard of that, but the rigs were, they still are very well, very nice, they're new, but in those days, uh, most of the engineers or AOs paid a lot out of their own pocket to get things chromed and polished, and things were just beautiful. I mean, uh, they kept the, uh, the rigs so nice, and the house, during, before it, prior to inspections, which we still do, we polish mm -hmm. the poles up. Mm -hmm. And everything just looks really, really nice and shiny. Right now we got this new road going in front, mm -hmm. so it's dusty all the time right now, but normally it's a lot cleaner. Just yeah, The guys try every day, every morning, they mop it, and they just kind of move the mud around. I noticed that the poles now, and at most of the stations, they're kept in the closets. What's the reason for that? What's the reason for them putting well, them in the Well, I remember being here in the uh, early 80s, like 81 or so I worked mm -hmm. here, and uh, we had the Miracle of France rigs. This, and uh, this was prior to the pollution control. Mm -hmm. So they, they had no uh, catalytic converters on those things or anything, and they used to give out a tremendous amount of black soot smoke. Mm -hmm. When they took off here, they fired up, mm -hmm. everybody was getting ready to go. And the smoke, they didn't have enclosures, and the smoke would just rise up to the dorm. And so you'd be, if you weren't on that run, you'd lay there and you'd, you just could breathe the smoke. Uh. <laughs> and it got real heavy up there. Mm -hmm. And they go, well, what is the, the, at first the guys, at first, the guys put like little trap doors on them. Mm -hmm. They put like little uh, one-way yeah. trap doors. With a little chain. Yeah, and then the city got a little wiser. So, you know, we ought to just, so they started to enclose them. But that's the reason for that, to keep the soot and the, uh, the exhaust from going upstairs. Yeah. Some of the guys built those. Some guys did it themselves. Yeah, they yeah. took it out of their own pocket because they were tired of breathing the heavy smoke and all the carcinogens, carcinogens that go with it and all that. But the, yeah, yeah. So let's walk back to the floor. Oh, okay. Before we, we moved to the rear of the station where the boiler room laundry room, and handball court were located. This is the old boiler room. Oh, there's a, the old boiler room back here. This is kind of a historic old boiler room because uh, it has the old radiator water heating system right there that circulates to the entire house. And then each, some of the bigger rooms, you have a radiator, which you open the valve mm -hmm. and you get a little heat. Mm -hmm. You know, then you shut it down and uh, it, it closes off the water and then no heat goes through there. So it's kind of neat, it's quiet. You know, it's real warm, real homey. Uh, then we got the water heaters, which they, mm -hmm. of course, that's for the, the Those showers. are later additions, probably. But it's kind of funny about this little place here. I remember studying here for engineer. Mm -hmm. Every every firefighter or rookie who comes through here is a study room here. It's kind of like, it's always warm back here, and they're here, and they answer the phone, they're always up late at night, because they're you know on the floor, being 
part of floor security or answering the phones mm -hmm. or being on, you know, on, on just on the spot. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how many guys, uh, I remember I, when I made uh, uh, engineer, I think, when I made captain, there was, uh, there was like eight people who made captain on my, on my, in that house in like a two or three year period. Just so many promotions out of here. With, and I've known many guys standing here, many hours standing you know, here. That dancing. desk. Maybe, yeah, that desk and other little table here, but you know, just uh, just a real comfortable place to study. This is the uh, our uh, handball or exercise room, an old type of room that's uh, large. Can be, uh, we play uh, volleyball, racquetball, handball. Uh, I think the last time we painted this was, God, I, I'd have to think, uh, years, I would have to think like, I think seven years ago, the last time it was painted. So it's due for a paint job. You, know? you gotta go and have a logo on the floor. Station one. Well, we used to have one there. The uh, It was here, I believe. It was called the Iron Men of uh, Fire Station 4. Uh, uh, but it got removed. And it was kind of, I don't know what it was, what happened with it. And, uh, the member's pretty talented. Uh -huh. He still works here. And he yeah, hand painted and everything. Uh -huh. But it was removed. I believe it was here. But it's been some years now. Maybe five years since I've seen it. Does this room still get a lot of use? Yes, it does. Every morning, somebody's out here playing uh, some type of racquetball or handball. Uh, uh, sometimes we'll shoot for, uh, uh, baskets just for, uh, for dishes. You know, simple best of three or best of five, you know. <laughs> <laughs> to see who's going to get to do what in the kitchen. Yes. Nice. <laughs> but but it's, a, it's a nice room. You know, it's, it's large compared, I guess, to some of the new ones are smaller. It's believed that the roof covering the handball court was constructed and built by the crew of this station. The best story, however, involved this court's use as someone's sleeping quarters. He's uh -huh. an old experienced hazmat uh, guru, uh -huh. and uh, he didn't like sleeping in the dorm because of the, uh, the air conditioner, uh -huh. so he slept in there. He would actually put his mattress in there and sleep because he, he felt it was more natural air. And plus, he could still hear the alarm system, and then he was right here, he'd open the door, go right on the rig. Just go right Over on. years, he did that. He would, every morning, he would get out, you know, and put his mattress back up where he was and come. That's great. Yeah, for That's years. Great. Whatever happened to that member? Oh, he transferred. He's still on the job, though. Yeah. He's still involved in hazmat. 